traditional homecoming king and queen contest. <clears throat> the contest consists of males and females who were chosen as the most dedicated members of their respective sports teams. In the winter, Overly hosts the Royal Club Dance, at which the King and Queen of Clubs are announced. Here, the candidates are representatives of various school organizations. They are girls and guys who are very involved in extracurricular activities. Well, it has come to our attention that we do not have a royal occasion in the spring. And, by unpopular demand, we are here tonight to remedy this grave situation. Yes, tonight we are holding another contest, one for those members of the student body who are, well, here, at least some of the time. And now, barely alive from Overly High, it's the 1983 Spring Thing Contest. <laughs> Remember, we are here tonight to elect the guy and girl who best represent the crude, gross, obnoxious element of the student body. People who have stained the reputation of our dear Overly. To entice our candidates out of the pool hall and onto our stage, we have promised the winners some marvelous prize <coughs> prizes. A custom-made chain, a new switchblade, a week of excused absences, and a bouquet, courtesy of Gardens of Faith. <laughs> Here they are, those raunchy, grody, disgusting individuals who just might be the next spring things. Candidate number one is Dangerous Dave O'Neill. <laughs> My goodness, Dave. Dave's qualifications include being a member of the varsity suspension team, slashing tires in the parking lot, and being president of the burnout steering committee. Thank you, Dave. Candidate number two, candidate for queen, is a thankless Theo Breesacker. <laughs> They're all great. Theo was a charter member of the Class Cutting League, the Exam Cheating Committee, and is especially noted for the poems she writes in lipstick on the lavatory walls. This girl needs guidance. <laughs> Candidate number three is formidable Freddie King. <laughs> Freddie boasts of being. Oh my goodness. Freddie boasts of being insubordinate to teachers, breaking windows in Sunshine Alley and initiating food fights on all three lunch shifts. <laughs> Candidate number four is Mean Mary Murtha. <laughs> Innocent as Mean Mary may look, she is rumored to have perfect absenteeism, has authored a pamphlet entitled 100 Excuses That Will Fool Any Administrator, and she is repeating the ninth grade for the seventh time. Whew. Candidate number five is Rowdy Ron Belenko. serving on the Teacher Revenge Committee, never getting carded at Hammerjacks, and smoking 30 cigarettes during one five-minute class break. <laughs> Candidate number six is Jazzy Janet Wilson. This 
sweet young thing is noted for having Overly's best chain collection, one ear pierced 13 times, and her own reserved space in the upper parking lot both day and night. <laughs> Candidate number seven is creepy Carl Polner. <laughs> Don't let creepy Carl's studious looks fool you. He is the sly fox that, in the dark of night, brought all those little critters into the building and introduced them to overly cafeteria food. His hobby is collecting Board of Education science scales. Our eighth candidate is our foreign exchange student from the planet Electros, Eddie Electron. cause fire drills to occur at will, to reprogram the county computer to give his friends credit for study hall 101, and to crank up 98 Rock and the school intercom system go away. And our last counted candidate in the contest is Dynamite Donna Bolenko. Up cookie. This little lady has crashed more parties than anyone in the history of Overly. She has written more graffiti than anyone in the history of Overly, and uses no word that has more than four letters. And those are our candidates. Let's really hear it for this motley crew of delinquents. And the winners are. <laughs> and the winners are.